Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at a Zoroark Dugong archetype. It's kind of picked up a bit of steam after last weekend where we saw Stefan Ivanov get a top 8 finish and also Henry Brandt was able to win his special event over in Australia. So it seems to be kind of back on the radar a little bit, trying to take advantage of the dual blizzard from Dugong. Obviously it's great in Zoroark mirror match situations, you can force the opponent into benching things awkwardly. Um, in addition to having good type coverage against Bacephalon GX, which has already obviously popped up as like a top tier contender now. You can even use the Dugong to like jump beast rings and stuff against Blounds and even against um, Zap Beasts as well. You can dodge the Sledgehammer turn, which is pretty cool. So trying to incorporate this sniping has a lot of advantages right now. And uh, that's why we're going to be looking at the Dugong base build. I'm still personally of the opinion that it's got a fairly weak Picarom and Reshizard matchup. I don't know if I'm just playing it wrong or uh, I've been in unfortunate situations, but for me, I feel like you could be playing Zoroark with better matchups in those departments. But the whole idea is the Dugong is very versatile in all sorts of situations that, yes, you're getting the nice type coverage against Reshizard to a certain extent, but it offers so much more. That's the main selling point of this. You can actually uh, take a read of Ibnoff's article. It's a really good uh, read over on Poker Beach. I'll try and link it down below. Um, as he kind of convinced me along the way um, to revisit this archetype. It's one of these things where as soon as Dugong came out, many people partnered it with Zoroark like straight away. And it's kind of eased into the format a little bit. And it may be a contender for NAIC. So let's jump into the list. Starting off with the 4-4 Zoro line. You've got to have this. Trade is so vital. We're digging towards 3 CE as well as DCE um, to get our attacks off. And we just want to try and get into our setup. We have lots of like important one-offs that we can try and dig towards. Um, setting up Persian to help us set up further when GXs get knocked out, all that good stuff. Right to speeding, still a great attack. 120 is still just good pressure throughout the entire game. Two shotting things with the help of the choice bands and the Kakui that we play in here that you can see down below. Um, as usual, right speeding still a great option. We have the 1-1 one, one line of Persian. Um, Persian with that catwalk can really guarantee some pretty good power spike turns is the idea here. Uh, making sure that you get into the correct energy that you need that following turn. As well as any damage modifiers or Guzma or uh, even picking out things like Palpad to then like Lele for them and stuff like that can be great. Establishing Muck plus Judge. These are things you can try and do with a Catwalk. So again, really versatile, strong ability that punishes the opponent taking two prize knockouts. Which most of the time people want to do so they can, you know, win a prize race. So this Persian's Catwalk is phenomenal for us. It also comes with two nice attacks. Vengeance does a base of 10 but 20 more for each Pokemon in your discard pile. Um, you can't add more than 180 in this way. So nine Pokemon in the discard pile is the maximum output you can get with Vengeance. Um, but we do have, again, Kakui and Choice Band to push these numbers even further. Uh, with that 190 baseline, um, you can even knock out Picaromp with a late game Vengeance, which is definitely worth noting. We have that Slash Back GX attack, which does 150 as well, which is fantastic. Um, very similar to uh, the Galissapod GX way back when with Zoroark. Uh, just for that one attachment now of 3 CE, you can do that 150 and switch yourself to the bench. Force your opponent to go for a non jet to skew prize trade or just protect your Persian in general. Um, whilst at the same time, 150, good base output uh, for two-shotting tag teams. At the same time, slap that choice band on, you can knock out the Denes and Leles and other basic GXs. So it's a really nice option to have in the deck. From there, the Dugong, I've already mentioned it a lot, uh, but Dual Blizzard does 60 and 60 wherever you want. Choice Band means that you can hit 180 on Blown uh, GX, which is huge. Even against Baby Blowns, it can be good for doing like a 1.5 prize trade. Against Zapdos, similar story. You're going to try and like hit a couple Zapdos at once or hit like Zapdos and Blitzel or Zapdos and Zeb Striker. Sometimes it's like double Jirachi that you'll target, force the opponent to keep moving their own Zapdos out the way. Uh, it's really annoying resource-wise for them, especially when you have the Muck established. It's really, really difficult for them to find multiple switching cards when they don't have Jirachi. Uh, to help them Stellar Wish towards those outs. So uh, this is probably like the Zoroark with the best Zapdos matchup. Uh, thanks to Dugong just ignoring the Zapdos for the most part and taking prizes elsewhere whilst also stopping uh, the potential of a Nihiligo turn or even a, a Buzzwell turn. If you want to get around both of them, you can. Uh, so the Dugong is amazing for that. You even have the Tail Wap attack, which shouldn't be slept on really because again, if you're attacking uh, Water Weak stuff, uh, 60 becomes 90 becomes 180 against, again, uh, Bacephalon GX or even uh, Reshizard. 180 into 120 still works for two-shotting them. Uh, so the Dugong's a powerful non-GX attacker in those matchups. From there, we still have the 1-1 line of Aloha Muck. Power of Alchemy is still amazing for shutting down Jirachi-based builds. 
There's Reshizard, there's uh, Zapdos, there's even Picaroms that are throwing back in um, Jirachis. Even then, there's... Um, even if they're just based on Dedenne and whatnot, especially if you go first, you can develop this before they can dance the Ancients for full value, so you can shut down Zera Aura. You really make life difficult for them, so this Alolan Muck is very strong. Do be careful when you are up against Picaron putting in Muck, because a lot of the time you might want to consider the Bench Barrier Mew. Uh, it's in here mainly for the Picaron matchup. You can do a few other cute things. Psy Power can do some nice math fixing alongside the Dugong. For example, if you're targeting two 70 hit point Pokemon, uh, with Dugong, you could then, like, Psy Power and uh, finish them off rather than have to spend another Dugong attachment, uh, which is pretty cute, really. Um, so that's something to consider. You could also, like, set things up math-wise for maybe some tag team Pokemon to knock them out. But for the most part, it's here to improve the Picaron matchup because we can rarely one-shot Picaron. Like I said, you do have that late-game sort of Persian GX option. Um, but usually we're going to try and use, like, a two-shot approach where you go Zoroark into Larvitar or like Dugong into Larvitar, those sorts of plays are what we're going to look for most of the time. So the Mew defending us from just dropping a whole bunch of prizes at once from a Tag Bolt is still pretty important. Speaking of which, here is Larvitar, second strike. That type coverage is nice for mirror matches, as well as Picarom, as mentioned just a second ago. Even Zero Aura, stuff like that. You can try and get Dugong spreads on them. You can try and use Mew to pepper them up and even just hit them with Zoroark and stuff. Again, I feel like the Lavatar approach is fine if you're the player going first, but going second, it does feel really slow, and it feels like we need the help of, like, Muck plus Judge to claw our way back into that game um, and make it hard for them to find, like, multiple damage modifiers in a single turn to one-shot our uh, Zoros. So I think the Lavatar is, like, a soft answer to Picarom, um, but still, like, an integral piece, really, of that puzzle. From there, we're going to have one copy of the Dene. Dene Change is a fantastic ability to have here. Um, so that we can, you know, if the Lily fails us or if we fail to find Lily on those opening turns, you can Dedenne and have a, a big amount of draw to get yourself higher outs to get basics early. Even in like turn two, you have further outs to find your Zoroarks and find your DC and whatnot on um, to start pressurizing with attacks. So I think Dedenne on turn one and two is phenomenal. And even on turns like maybe if you miss Catwalk or whatever, you can Dedenne change plus trade to try and find outs. Those are also things to bear in mind. Lele is still great for digging out um, Lily in those opening turns, as well as, you know, we play lots of one-offs and two-offs supporters in here. Um, so wonder tagging for those is still pretty important at times. Let me round things off with the Ditto, which is just the king of versatility in here. Can be an extra Zerua, Meowth, Grimer, Seal. You know what Ditto is all about. It's amazing at this point. Uh, especially when we play so many stage ones in here. We play four different stage ones, which is pretty uh, crazy. Uh, onto the item cards, uh, we play the one offs of Rescue Stretcher, um, Field Blower, and Power Pad. These are all like standard one offs in Zorark at this point. They all have the same item shell, really, for the most part. And then we play the four, four balls, as well as four Pokecom. 21 Pokemon in, in the Zorark deck at the moment. Uh, it's kind of on the low side. You can consider some other Pokemon, which I'll talk about in a bit, which would increase your outs to Pokecom, but already, you know, it's a third of the deck. We have a good amount of outs of Pokecom in general. I'm choosing to play Brooklet Hill as my stadium of choice, playing two copies um, because it can help you get Seal and Lavatar down. I think against Picarom, it is integral to get Lavatar quickly, uh, but also Seal is part of that product. So trying to get both of them established is really helpful via the Brooklet Hill. Um, and it means that you just have more outs to Seal early, so you can commit your Nest Balls and Comms and Ultra Balls to other basics, namely more Zeruas. So um, <clears throat> I like the Brooklet being extra consistency search, really, for the deck. On supporter cards, playing one Tate and Liza. I'm playing this over the one copy of Cynthia. Um, it gives you some out to Muck getting trapped against Stall. Uh, a lot of the times you have to establish Muck to get around Hoopers. Um, so Tate and Liza plus Power Pad gives you some outs to move your Muck out of the way to keep pressurizing them. Although Stall is obviously a pretty bad matchup for us. Um, it also means that we can switch into our Lavatar. I'm essentially using this as like a switch space slash our Cynthia space. It does offer that two-in-one service ability, so I think it's reasonable. It can get you out of bad spots, um, but it's nice for saving the muck, and it's nice for getting Lavatar into play all in one turn. Like, you don't have Lavatar up, there's something damaged, you can just like Tainalyzer into the Lavatar attached to him from like a Brooklyn Hill or something. Stuff like that could be pretty cute. So I like the Tate and Liza one of. It's something that Evenoff did, and I'm kind of a fan of it after playing around with it. You know, initially I was like, why is this not just a Cynthia? If you're not playing Monkey anyway, you should probably just play Cynthia. But then the Tate and Liza's come in useful a couple of times so far. It's pretty cool. 
Um, the one Professor Kukui uh, for extra damage modifiers. It can help you push with Lavatar. Like it's either Choice Band or Kukui that you need after you've done a um, Dugong hit onto a Picarom to one shot uh, to finish them off. I guess with Second Strike. Um, so the Kukui is pretty integral for that. It can set up even better numbers with a whole lot of things. So it's just a cute math fixer right now. Getting over 130 hit point uh, basics. Um, as well with Zoroark is something that's not always easy without the Kukui, so that's pretty helpful. Two copies of Acerola. I still like the two count. I think there's enough wheezing and there's enough um, like mirror matches to consider right now as well. The Acerola is good as a two count, great for Zapdos as well, obviously. So just securing that matchup seems reasonable now that Zapdos is back in a big way. Uh, so having the safety net of double Acerola seems correct to me. Obviously, they can just get pitched in the one hit hero matchups. Um, double Guzma alongside Power Pad is kind of on the low side. I kind of would like third. A lot of the time the Power Pad is used for Guzma plus another target. Sometimes it's just double Guzma that you take from the Power Pad. Um, so it's definitely something to bear in mind. But I think with the added spread option that we have, I think we get away with a double Guzma because we can already access the bench a good amount via our attacks. A couple copies of Judge in here. Disruption is a big element of Zorak's win condition these days. It's great against Green's build of Zard. So once you get through their first Zard, you hit them with a Judge at the same time, and they have to try and find, like, Welder in the same, t like, on that turn. Otherwise, they're going to have a slow turn of pressure. Um, it's great alongside the Muck for shutting down anything Jirachi-based. Uh, great for Picarom to try and deny them finding, like, lots of Electro Powers to just burst through you as well. So that's all really important stuff. I think the Judge is uh, nice as a two-count right now. Definitely pretty useful. We got ourselves uh, four copies of Lily. <laughs> My cat's just coming. Um, we see uh, four copies of Lily for extra consistency boosting. You know, this is just our optimal turn one supporter all the time, which is pretty important. Double choice band, I've talked about it for its modifier alongside Dugong for type coverage, which is definitely an important thing. Great for Persian, uh, for slashing back for one hit KOs and stuff like that. So that's the main purpose of the choice band. And at the moment, I'm at 8 energy. I've kind of been between 7 and 8. Uh, I think when you play the Lavatar, you kind of need to play the 4 DCE as well. Uh, in previous renditions, like the Silvalli build, I think you get away with just 3 DCE. Uh, but I think more often than not, because you will be spending DCEs into these things that will instantly get knocked out, like the Lavatar, like Mew sometimes as well, um, the 4 copies seems like the most correct. So at the moment, we are just at the 8 energy to round things out. But different things you could be adding into the deck. Uh, there's definitely a few... Things that I've seen around a different few number of uh, Dugong builds. Giratina is one of them. Distortion Door being a way to be like a faster version of the Mew side powering things. Uh, when Dugong's just doing the dual blizzard stuff, you can try and capitalize on 70 hit point things. The biggest 70 hit point thing out there is Jirachi. And I think more often than not, you want to lock them out with Muck than just let them have it and try and like tempo out on them with Giratina. I actually think the biggest benefit of Giratina is against Blacephalon GX. Um, because it can help you knock out like a Poipole a lot easier, or it could help you knock out an Aganadel a lot easier as well, because they have, you know, 70 and 130 hit points respectively. So both of the times it would be an extra snipe for the Dugong, kind of being like wasted damage. So when your opponent isn't putting down um, like two GX Pokemon as a Blounds, you really want to see that Giratina. Um, but otherwise I think it's kind of a wasted bench space that you don't often have uh, in the deck, because, you know, you're normally committing to a number of Zoroarks, Persian and Dugong, and then you've probably put down a Lele or a Dedenny at some point in the game as well. So I think the Giratina space-wise just isn't really worth it uh, physically on your board. Uh, Mar Shadow is another one. Obviously, we're not playing Let Loose, but uh, Resetting Hole is one you could bear in mind. Red Knuckles to defend yourself again against uh, Buzzwall GX, which isn't really around much at all at the moment. That's the reason why I felt comfortable cutting it. Uh, but Resetting Hole being another way, like a searchable way of discarding Stadium cards. At the moment, I'm playing two Stadium, one Blower. Oftentimes, you'll see one Stadium, one Blower, one Marshadow. Marshadow, you know, the big kicker of playing the Marshadow is you can um, get it back with a Rescue Stretcher. So it's effectively, like, one space for potentially two, like, gusting effects uh, to get, a rid of, uh, get rid of, um, not gusting effects, uh, like, to challenge Stadium uh, to get rid of them. So if you really are concerned about, like, for example, um, Shrine or something like that, you could try and put in the, um, the Marshadow. Again, my stance is bench space is annoying. Um, also, one of the main shrine decks out there is Zapdos. The other one's Weezing. In both situations, Muck is actually pretty good against them. Muck shuts down a Rangaroo and it shuts down Jirachis. Obviously, against uh, Weezing, you don't care too much about 
uh, putting the muck into play because it's a bench space. But if you're having to attack with um, Zoroark for Riders Beating, you need to fill your board anyway. So getting the muck down isn't the worst idea because it shuts down Guru. You're going to judge them a handful of times. Uh, and we're already playing double Acerola. So I feel comfortable enough that we don't need the Marshadow in here anyway. So muck's just better than the Marshadow, I think, in general. <laughs> like, you get muck out in a good amount of matchups, to be fair, right now. Uh, for item cards, you could be considering, uh, I think, the stadiums you could consider being different. Uh, you could think about adding in Devad Fields for extra health against 130 hit point stuff. Um, but from there, there's not a huge amount I would look into. Yeah, that seems to round things off uh, for now. So, let's jump into the ladder and see how Zoro Dugong works. Um, like I said, it's one of these things where I tried off kind of early on in the season, um, but it sort of didn't do all that well, and we're starting to see it creep back into relevancy right now just based on where the meta's shaped up the cephalon like coming out in the forefront um really being a good new matchup that you can sort of pick up on zapdos as well kind of no longer living in fear of stall because there's enough zard that's actually succeeded that the stall stuff has to be concerned so i think you've got enough like positive matchups with zoro dugong now that it might be the most relevant build out there who knows Depends, though. If you're still expecting the two tag teams to be, you know, running wild over the format, it's one of the more risky decks you could play. You really have to be on the button with your first one or two turns to get through those tag team matchups because their raw output is so strong and our raw output isn't so strong. You're relying on two-shotting the tag teams in every rendition that you see, so uh, that's, the, that's the concern. We get to go first here. We have Zerua start. We have Attachment, Lily... Potentially putting down this Grimer as well. Drawing maybe five, maybe uh, maybe more cards, depending on what uh, we draw into. Yeah, we'll see what we're up against. We are very much a reactive deck, so we have to react to what our opponent has. Thankfully, we see Jirachis, so we know we want this down. Um, Jirachis normally means that we can get hit on our first turn, either it's like a fire deck that can welder or it's a um, Zapdos deck that can just come in and swing. But to make this Lily stronger, I'm still going to attach turn one. And we'll get four cards from the Lily here. We get Nestle, Com, Zoroark. We're going to have to scout if our Ditto's here. Muck is here. Whenever you see Jirachi, you want to develop Ditto Grimer if you can. And thanks to our Pokecom, I feel more safe doing this because we can go ahead and grab Zerua here. As our backup, we do have our Persian in here, both Dugongs, the Dene's in here, Lele's prize, definitely worth noting. Um, okay. We'll just grab our next Zerua. I feel a lot more confident just attaching freely with Zoroark now that you play eight energy cards. Previously, it's kind of like, look out for the four DCs, never really spend them unless you're getting value, but I feel like we get away with it a lot more now. Let's see if we're up against a... Reshi or a Zap? Looks like it's going to be a Reshi. And typically with Reshi, you'll first come up against the Eevee Snorlax, where Lavatar is also helpful. Of course, it's a very similar mentality to uh, trying to deal with a Picaron. They're also going to nestle out a Growlithe. We're actually going to attach to the Growlithe and then just key our way to the big boy. <clears throat> okay. So picking up 3C gives us the option of going for a Guzma attempt here. Guzma for one, not even 120, it would be 80 right now. I'd still have a trade though. I think... With that in mind, I'll evolve and trade away Field Blower to kick things off here. See where our hand takes us. Hmm. The hand is super dead. Outside of the fact that I can... Hmm. So I can like, stretch it back to Zoroark. If I just try and bring this up and hit it... I feel like we often have to be very proactive against them. My alternative is like... Kukui and try and get two more draws and play around them and just like hope they don't have Guzma. Feels pretty weak. Uh, the alternative, like the other alternative, is that they have three individual prize cards here. We can start trying to like whittle away at those. And I think we'll Kukui. 
and hope to find more stage ones here. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Uh, also, our Lavatar's prized, which is also pretty bad, I would say. So we're going to go ahead and get a Meowth down. Yeah, this is not going to be easy, boys and girls. So, I'll ram for 40. It sets this up for a Dugong attack, which actually isn't that bad. When you think about it, we could, like, Dugong maybe these two targets for, like, a double knockout or something at some point. But our Lavatar being in the prize cards is a problem. He's our main answer to this big, chunky boy. A skateboard isn't Guzma, which is something. They're going to Stellar Wish again. That's a Guzma, though. Wow. He's more worried about a Ditto. Interesting. I guess he hasn't seen that we're Persian-based yet. Oh, sorry, uh, Dugong-based. He might be concerned about Sylvalai. That's super good for us. We're going to our Zoroark. We found nothing but energy cards. Man, these hands aren't great. <clears throat> we'll smack him for 120. With the hope being the next time I can stretch it, this is Oroark. And we want to try and find Band or um, Persian to finish this guy off. Very concerned about any mill tank shenanigans. This deck hates seeing mill tank at work. That's why when you're up against the Jirachi Zard, you have to try and muck them because otherwise the two shot plan goes to pot as soon as they find a combination of switching cards and mill tank. That ditto though, he's helped the team greatly. The opponent's going to switch and try and cash in on the Stellar Wishes while they can. Welds is a good pickup for them. <clears throat> They're going to go ahead and play Welder. Growlithe's going to get powered up. See a Heat Factory come in. They can also Nest Ball. Speak of the devil. This is our biggest fear in this matchup. If he can switch and heal, even just one bit of healing is awful for us. See an Ultra Ball now. They can even Dedene if they want to dig even further for this turn. They're going to grab Let Loose. I don't hate Let Loose at all. I mean, our hand's not been great. Oh, crumbs. So we're about to get bodied real quick. Our slow start is definitely being felt. Go into our Zerua. Let's get back a Zoro. We shall trade away a Sorola. 
say if this were Pokecom, which we miss, but we do find the Persian itself, which is amazing. So what are we looking for off of this? Probably just Muk Zorro. Probably just Muk Zorro. It's Lily. Let's trade away the Ultra Ball. Now we're just right beating. So the thing we don't want to see is him weld to a Reshizard this turn. That's the thing we're most afraid of. Next turn we'll catwalk for Stadium Judge. Okay. Stadium Judge seems like the play. Some shenanigans, get another Zoroark up this way. Uh, I don't mind committing this here. This has to come in. I think I like just deck pinning here as much as possible. Mew is a potential late game win condition. How much do I like it? I don't like it. I think I'd rather another seal. How much does this do? 30. <clears throat> okay. Just gotta hope that Muck Judge has done the business to save us. We die to Arcanine Guzma. We die to Reshizard Welder Attach Choice Band. And the bottom line is the opponent has a lot of turns to accumulate stuff. This is our first three prizes of the game. So, it's a time bomb now. Opponent's played two Guzmas though, which is good news. Typically the deck plays three. They've also played a couple welders. I'm lying, just one welder. If they can't find a basic attacker this turn, we can try and like Guzma down this guy as well. Which would be pretty sweet. There's the next EV Lax. Ooh, scary.
So we really want a Guzma this turn. We gotta try and two shot the uh, Eevee Snorlax as our win condition now. We have a surplus of energies. Please, Guzma. Please. Ooh, sweet. Well, good luck us, I guess. He needs to have a third welder and two fire energies. Ah, he has played three welders. Yeah, one's a reverse. Eight fire energy in the discard pile, so it needs to be like fiery flint. Sorry, fire crystal. He definitely shouldn't have hit us because of Acerola. I guess he knows that we've played them. <sighs> Dugong can come in. He still needs the same things to beat us. And he has to promote this now. I don't know if I guess was in deck, that's why I didn't do it. <laughs> okay, they lost. I didn't know if I lost because was in deck. Should have known that, but pretty sure we lose to the same things. They had one more turn to find their last welder and uh, fire crystal. So Judge Muck is still good against this deck, but definitely scary times. This is why you need to prize check, folks. We gave them one more draw to win the game because of my laziness. It's a nice comeback though, especially without Lavata. Good to know that you can beat it without Lavata. And shout out to Ram turn one, which helped us set up that Dugong. <laughs> this hand is nuts. This hand is so sick. A judge turn one is scary, but three Nespels. Oh, that's the spice. If we could draw a Pokemon off the top, that would be nuts. Represent something something fairy though, which can't be good news for us. Whimsicott. Okay. Oh, Lily's a draw. That is certainly a draw of sorts. Let's go ahead and get Ditto. Okay, let's check some stuff this time. One ace prized, both Guzmas here, both judges are here. Kui prize two three CEs, which is relevant for the amount of dugogging I was expecting to do this game. Okay. We'll grab more Zeruas. 
Persian's like kind of fine. I don't think it's necessary for a while though. I think I just still continue to try and trade a bunch. Seal's probably very good against this Rabombe stuff. Just a hunch. So they put down another Cottony, which means if I do get a Dugong next turn, I could double snipe. Even if this evolves, only a 60. Hmm. That Viridian's real good for us as well. It makes our Lily stronger next turn. <clears throat> which I can get on board with. I may have to judge, though. If he toy boxes, we have to judge him. Rabombe, as mentioned, has 60 hit points. They've Viridian away. Fairy Charm Lightning. Nest ball. Third cotton ball. Huh. This opens up Acerola as an out for us to do a dugong double kill. Dugong for two prizes just sounds good, right? I'm still going to thin. Thin this. See, I can just Lele for our Ace or Titan Liza. I guess we do the Titan Liza, right? Save Acerola. Meowth was a pretty sick top deck. I'll just chase the energies down. There are two 3Cs prized, which is why I don't mind going basically supporterless, but we managed to miss them. Fair enough. <laughs> Not supporterless, Zoroarkless, I guess is the better way to put it. Put it Viridians for a fairy. We were able to find a lily. Finally, a whimsicott comes down. They may be using toy box here. We have the judge raring to go. Yeah, they're gonna toy box. That said, judging without Zoroark is a bit scary. We only have one more three CE in the deck. Thin a useless card. Guzma seems useless when we see a Rabombe. So I'll begin trading.
We are scared about the option for them to have Fairy Charm ability, of course. So we've got to keep an eye on this field blower. Oh, they played Dumbbells. Yikes. Mm. They Viridian away a Guzma for a Fairy. And just 70. Okay. I still trade the Meowth here. I could like Komazaro, but pass. So. Yuck. <sighs> Mina start accelerating this whimsical. They're going to stretch her for a cottony. They think now's the time now that they're knocking out a dugong put down this stuff, which makes sense. Okay. I think we can more or less happily Lily here. I could pal pad. I kind of want to save it for when our Acer Road is played, though. We can draw cards, finally. And it's our first flip. No damage. They just straight up energy blow for a hundred. <clears throat> you can continue to trade a bunch. It's a row at the back end is pretty good. 369, 12, 15, 18, 19. So even if they 3CE, 369, 12, 15, 18, 19. So I can go into this one. I should still go into this one. Why not? We can trade. And we're going to attempt another rice beating. Sweet. We do some damage. What a treat. We still want to dig towards this 3CE before he evolves. <laughs> We really want to find that 3CE, because then we only have to flip one more heads to win the game. Two triples in the prizes that we weren't able to find earlier is a bit of a pain. Wow, they play Acerola. Okay. Even more reason for us to find this uh, dugong.
chooses not to play it down. Okay. Gonna trade just a couple more times. I'd be conscious a little bit about deck out. Coin flips, etc, etc. It's beating. Cottony now comes down. We do have the triple. And we can see the energy below. I'm now going to restrain myself from trading anymore. Take two more prizes. There's the three C's. And a Zorro, sure. Still pretty far. Oh, they're gonna Guzma. I say I'm still pretty far away from winning the game. Damage wise, To get ahead, just gotta be patient now. They get a nest ball, a con bud. <clears throat> Let's get back at Acer Rollers. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, it's the same math. Do I do going to try and um, make it so that he can't ace a roller anymore? 16 60 still leads into 130 with the rush beating or like a slash back for a knockout. Um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. I do have the potential to just win. Nine. Potential to be trapped as well though. 50-50 for win. Sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Just win. Nice. 
Cool. Dugong definitely, uh, definitely got us there. Dugong saw us through that game, that's for sure. Let's get one more in. <clears throat> Double Acerella also being clutch. I'm gonna quickly grab a strepsil, guys. My apologies, but I have a cold. So yeah, Zara Dugong. Seems pretty good so far. We've had some sketchy turns though, I've only like one trade for the longest time, which is a bit scary. But we seem to be getting into a point of being able to control the game. Like later on. So far at least. It's gonna be a Pika Rom. It's a Jirachi, I know that much. Don't look, guys. <laughs> That's a lot of energy is going away. painful. But the Dene means that we don't just lose the game, so. Not losing the game does sound quite good. Volvon well, isn't Guzma. So if that zap dose, this is safe. If that Pika Rom, I'm probably evolving this into Dugong. Nice. Again, zap dose, you only really need like two DCs. <laughs> So these energies are fine. They can they can get out of here. They can ship up and ship out. Then we go thunderous assault, which is fine. That's a really, really, really good draw. Means I don't have to go for a Lele now. Muck is in here. We do literally have two DCs to work with. So we prize the three C. Both our judges in the discard, aren't they, from the, the Dene? Palpad's prized? Oh no. So I don't want to put down Brooklyn Hill because it can give him the buzz. And I only have one 3 CE, so I can't play around uh, Sledgehammer. That's one downside of Brooklyn Hill. But it's only because we had to Dedene away all of our stuff. So. All of these things.
Okay. It's again a bit of a slow burn for us, but it's going okay. Muck on two is always the dream against Zap. The scary thing is their hand size is pretty big, pretty sizable. And not being able to judge them out until we're able to rip Palpad from prizes is the biggest fear here. Then we go Ultra Ball. Oh, it is Picaron. Okay. Picaron that just wanted pressure turn one. Okay. Muck is still good because they haven't been able to Coco. But this is scary. Oh boy, is this scary. Man, that's a decision, huh? He also rolled away choice band and power. Really? Really? Huh. Okay. Well then, that's pretty good. No damage modifier one time. Always lucky. Oh, always lucky. Nice. Gives us a chance, guys. Gives us a chance. that Meowth quickly. <laughs> we want him. No, no, no. I'm getting that off the nest pool. Trade. We tried this. I'm going to bench this to make him snipe this instead of the Meowth. So much we respect the Meowth. And how badly we need the damage.
Uh, I should have held DC. Should have held it for Lele if he doesn't kill Lele. Sugar. I think I misplayed. Should have held this, this DC for sure. Well, he didn't have damage modifier last turn. And he's Goosemaring now. to attach. Okay. Now he definitely kills Lele, yeah. Okay. I think it's still in our reach. Trade this. I can always ultra for Persian to get all the stuff I need. So we're probably trying to two shot through this guy. Really want to judge him, but the stupid power pad surprised. That's huge. It's also pretty good. I don't think I want this. So we're doing enough. Do I stretch a back Grimer Muck and try to catwalk back Grimer? Let's look one more trade actually. I think I need to reestablish this. I guess my alternate route was like find a bunch of Pokemon off Catwalk and start trading them away for like a vengeance win condition to like one shot him. Oh no no, Kakui's in the in the discard and I can't power pad. So yeah, that's not a route. Daily change does give us a good dig next turn, but it's an easy two prizes. I think it's just these, you know. Okay. So he has Dance of the Ancients available. We really want power pad off of these three, by the way. There it is. So his Dance of the Ancients available, he still has a lot of damage modifiers. So if he can dance, buff, buff, we just lose. His hand size is pretty big. Six, eight. He didn't have any modifiers the last two turns that I remember. So it's like Stellar Wish, possibly. Oh no. Looks like he's gearing up for game. If this is a Coco, yeah. Then he has Stellar Wish for game for damage modifier. Or Volkner is an out as well. Oh, he already has it. Okay. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I feel like an uh, uh, unfortunate combination of an ugly Dedene plus Palpad being prized sort of sealed our fate this game. Lavatar prize too, by the way. 
<laughs> so, I mean, sure. Yeah. Good job. I'm already dead, bro. Um, so, yeah. As mentioned earlier, one of my concerns was Picarol. And it seems Picarol has gone poorly for us. But on this turn where he did all the explosive stuff, if I could have just catwalked to judge, I feel like we just win. <laughs> but whatever. Not important. Not important. Good job, dude. Right, so that's Zoro Dugong. It's, uh, okay. The Dugong felt pretty good, but... Also, we were kind of bricking, like, every turn of every game. <laughs> so, yeah, Zorok's in a strange spot. A lot of people just, like, write it off at the moment. It's a strange one. It's trying to be, like, a anti-meta toolbox, basically, at this point. And there's a lot of moving parts of the deck, which is definitely something to bear in mind. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the list in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for another... Uh, Unbroken Bonds deck. Cheers.